Hey there everybody, welcome back to more Haunting Ground. Well, last time our meal did not agree with us and we found ourselves with a bit of a tummy ache. And with our movement pretty much slow to a crawl, we have no other real choice than maybe just to sleep it off. And just like that, the mildly sinister undertones that Danielle had given off before have given way to full-blown aggression towards Fiona. I'm not really sure why at this particular point, but needless to say that Debil Toss has been replaced by Daniela for this portion of the game as the stalker. We'll be seeing a lot more of her, but for right now, it's merely up to us to make our way back to that door she interrupted us from opening earlier. It's actually a fairly easy jaunt. Yeah, we'll be seeing later that Daniela actually is quite a bit faster than Debilitas, but I think they just wanted to give you a bit of a scare right from the get-go, even though there isn't really that much to this particular chase. But that is definitely not to say that you shouldn't keep on your toes for Daniela. She does have some magic abilities such as teleportation. But we don't actually have to worry about her in this particular room. She is kind of preoccupied. Miss, it's cleaning time now. Yeah, to some degree, she still retains a certain portion of her maid-like abilities, even though, well, more often than not, whenever we see her, she will just be straight-up aggressive towards us. Hopefully we can figure out some means to 
defend ourselves, much like the bisque doll we used with the Bilitas. But by using our key, we can now get into some brand new areas, and actually a whole new area known as the mansion. Seems that Daniela has finished with her cleaning and has now gone back to the chase. And with an incredibly strange reaction to her own reflection, we actually find out what Daniela's weakness of sorts is. She just does not seem to be very happy with herself. But we can definitely use this in the future. We'll just keep that in mind for right now. Let's just go ahead and keep exploring. Also, I want to put out a bit of a quick notice or apology I suppose I, I've totally forgot how much of a emphasis is put on Daniela's reflection and as you can kind of tell it does cause a little bit of an error with the graphics I do apologize for that but there really just isn't much I can do with that so I'm sorry and hopefully you can deal with it But with that water coming down, we're actually blocked off from progressing anywhere back into the castle proper. Actually, a bit of an oddity, I suppose, with the fact that there was a mansion attached directly to the castle. But I think as we progress through this area, it'll probably be the less of the oddities we'll see. And already, see there is another hole in the wall in case we do need to access an alchemy machine or the Spherots and the Tree of Life. The starting motif we see here seems something akin to a museum. Lots of stuffed and mounted things. Yep, not nothing weird there. But let's just keep this area in mind for later. You can see something shimmering there behind the glass, but we can't get to it just yet. Now the one thing that we'll start to notice as we do go through this mansion area is that it's actually comparatively small in comparison to the castle. It's actually a bit more of a loop than what we saw in the castle and in all honesty there are a lot less places to hide and a lot less traps to trigger against Daniela so this is definitely going to be a lot harder than what we saw before. It's also going to be a bit confusing since this place does have a bit more obtuse directions to go 
and a bit more cryptic puzzles to figure out, I should say. Well, that's not to say there isn't some assistance laying around. You just gotta know where to look. Such as here, we can actually learn what some of the items we can create with the alchemy machine, what they actually mean. But in this particular room, we actually find our first puzzle, which is centralized around this unlit lamp. Now, you might be thinking maybe we could throw one of our autonomies or magnesia at it to set it off, but there is actually a much more complicated, I suppose, means to actually light up that lamp. You may recall that the luminescents actually give off something of a small explosion when they go off, and we're actually going to have to use that to our advantage in, in regards to that particular oil lamp. It's just, as you can imagine, trying to hurt a luminescent is kind of tedious. Especially in regards to whenever the camera changes. Yeah, I'm not always a fan of tank controls, but thankfully they do give you an everlasting spawn of them here. Even though it's kind of a double-edged sword, in case you do keep messing up, you'll find yourself pretty quickly going into a full-blown panic. But by leading it back to this little room here, we just have to make it run into the lamp in the center. We have managed to open up a secret compartment somewhere else in the mansion. But as we continue through these different walkways, we are getting a view of what we'll be seeing later, such as this lovely garden area. Just random empty rooms. Sure, maybe that's meant to be some sort of a trap, but I I really have never run into anything in there. Come on. Also, I heard Huey howling. I was kind of worried about him, but I think he just got a little bit turned around. And what do we have here? <gasps> Why, it's just a random mummified corpse. No idea what that is supposed to be an allusion to, or if it's supposed to be somebody that we should know, but it does cause us a little bit of a fright, so I, I guess if you didn't want to be mildly scared, you could just choose to ignore it. Also, you may be wondering about what these blocked-off doorways are supposed to be for. We'll actually be finding out later, but it does require us to set in motion a particular mechanism. But needless to say, they will pretty much be shortcuts. Okay. 
But in this nearby doorway here, we actually find a very important room. Huey. Not only is it our restoration point for this particular area of the game, which I'll go ahead and indulge myself in, but you'll also notice that it does have a typewriter. Go, Huey. Also, there is at least one hidden item I know of in this room. And it's actually an upgraded version of the Magnesium, or Magnesia. Good boy. Yeah, they are really setting us up for these offensive items. I guess they expect us to be fighting a lot more. But all that aside, we actually get our second puzzle of the area. Can you spot the elements located in the, uh, the jumble of letters here? I know I can. But we are going to need to keep track of... I think there are probably like five of them in there, but we only actually need to keep track of three. And we actually are going to make the plate keys for those, just for a later puzzle, so we don't have to backtrack, but... Keep in mind, do not open these blinds. Do not. For something happens. Yeah, if your curiosity happens to get the better of you, and you do happen to trigger that cutscene, Daniela will indeed pretty much corner you in this room, and it becomes a rather annoying situation of trying to find out the nearest place to hide and trying to evade her. It's actually pretty annoying in these very narrow corridors. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and make the three elemental key plates. We need one for salt, one for mercury, and a final one for sulfur, even though they spell sulfur in a rather odd manner. It's actually S-U-L-F-U-R. I'm more, I'm more used to the Roman-esque way of spelling it with a P-H. With those key plates in hand, we can now continue on exploring. Continue taking in all the bizarre sights that this mansion has to hold. I mean, at least the castle put up some pretense of having some semblance of sense, I suppose, but this place really just kind of throws that all out the window. Even though with our mansion sketch, it... Like, if you look at the map, it does seem to have some reasonably put together style to it, or at least it makes sense when you look at the map. But when we're actually walking through the rooms, they just seem a bit of a clusterfuck. But what do we have here, but yet something similar to what we found in the bathroom? It may initially seem like this is a fairly complicated puzzle, but it's really not. It's mostly just 
finding out the elements, making key plates. You don't really have to know any particular placement for them. And you don't really have to do anything too complicated with them. Though Huey's growling is to tell us that something nearby is dangerous, but it's just another luminescent. But it does have a particular reason for being in this hallway here, so we yet again, and I think for the final time, have to herd this luminescent. Also, don't be afraid of that shadow there, it's actually not Daniela. But amid all these dragon statues, we find another unlit torch. And inside, we have an item that we have absolutely no idea what to do with. This will be for much later on in this area, but for right now... Well, we have another puzzle to solve. A large fire billowing from the ground and a note stuck in the dragon's mouth will kind of give us a bit of a hint as to what we're supposed to do. Now, by reading the note, we find that it is yet again from our pal Lorenzo. He's still trying to help us out. And what we have to do is speak the three words to make the dragons happy, I guess? To calm their blazing fire, and it requires the spiritual essence. They really play it up to be a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Really, you just need to pick out the elements from that one uh, one thing we saw in the bathroom and make plate keys and then just put those plate keys in the dragon's mouth. I guess they wanted to make it seem a lot more complex than it actually was, but well, I'm glad it doesn't require too much thought. But you might notice there is a bit of a problem with where the third plate key might go. It's actually a little bit out of Fiona's grabbing reach, or grabbing range, I should say. Or it's out of her reach, let's just go with that. But if we go ahead and use the plate key, something magic happens. And Huey continues to show off how massively useful he is. Such a good dog. Oh but yet again, we deal with another piece of Resident Evil style puzzle logic here. I'm not sure why on earth this would have even been created. It, its only purpose here is to actually serve as a means for us to get to the second floor. I don't really assume that they built the mansion up to be that way, but... I, I, I guess we can't argue with it. It does allow us to progress. And it looks like we actually got out of that room just in the nick of time. As you can tell by the tonal change in the music, Daniela must have shown up. But we're actually in relative safety up here in this library. The door is locked, and as far as I know, the Daniela can't actually climb up that ice pillar, so we are safe. But we are a bit inconvenienced. We do have to wait for the terror to subdue or subside. And 
And just like that, it, it's instantly over. So let's go ahead and head back into the library here. Check out that step ladder with the shiny object on top of it. Now it appears we can't climb it, but we do have another means of rocking the boat. Yep, we just are using our smarts every which way we can. But for our kicking efforts, we get the Jupiter key. And also, by unlocking this particular door, we open up something of a shortcut. It's not actually that big of a shortcut. But you may recognize where it puts us after we head through this door here. We head right back into the room with the Leering Mammoth. But we've made pretty much a large circle. And I think we've actually got quite a bit done. So since we are near a room with a save point, I think I'm going to go ahead and use that and call this a video. Hopefully you'll join me next time whenever we figure out what to do with this particular key we got. See you then.